So, so let me ask you, who's up mm -hmm. him now mm -hmm. for your latest music videos? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the quality is wonderful. Uh, it's just definitely, um, it's definitely with your age, you turn a new corner. How did y'all link up and decide, yo, I'm gonna get back into music, Himbo's gonna produce it, and you know, we're gonna do it, we're gonna turn it up. Um, to be honest with you, man, um, there was no real set plan. It kind of just, you know, I, I you know, I, 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 I allow God to like really, really guide me, and like He was just giving me stuff musically, like a lot of it. And then um, me and Himbo, we we went to, we were trying to link up. And the key word is trying. I don't use that word a lot, but because there's an option to fail wherever you try, so I don't use that word. But anyways, so we were trying to link up before, and um, it just went right. It just went the timing went right. Um, I wanted to be able to compensate him because I believe in compensating everybody for their time. So I wanted to be able to do that without killing myself. And because um, he wasn't asking for a lot, he wasn't even, but it's just me, I am. It's, you know, I just want to make sure people straight whenever, whenever, you know, they doing anything for me or with me. And so it kind of just happened, man. I just, I, I just started making the music and, and then I called him and, and said, hey man, like I'm, I'm back for real this time and I'm ready to go this time. And, he was, he was like, I'm ready. Whenever that was it. Like it was just, just the kind of how like I called you. It was like, all right, I'm ready to do this, and just like that. Well, when you say previous before, mm -hmm. give me an estimate of time. So when you okay. say before, what are you talking about? Two years, yeah. ten years. Nah, we've known each other 10, 20 years. Right, right, right. So we always say we're gonna do something together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, nah, Himbo, Himbo, and I, as as far as the record, as far as the music part of things and the production part of things, probably about three, four years ago. Yeah. Um, but in passing, met you know, met each other. But like, when I first said, "Hey, man, we need to do some work," or whatever the case may be, um, probably about four years, three, four years ago. Um, and then I just had other people, other people in my circle that needed to be weeded out, weeded. and um, needed I need the, the weaker links needed to be cut, to, for lack of a better term. So that's what happened. And, um, you know, the chain is only as strong as the weakest link, and we all know that. So once I got, I, I feel like I got a group, a solid, good solid group around me now, and, and, and Himbo being that guy, and um, now we're running. Yeah. We are. We're gonna make it happen. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? This is Mona Motivated King, and I'm greatly, greatly appreciative and happy to be here with my guy, State Senator Bobby Powell. I'm gonna let him introduce himself and tell y'all whatever, whatever else he wants y'all to know, you know what I mean? Thank you. Of course, my name is Bobby Powell Jr., State Senator representing State Senate District 30. I am one of 40 in the state who Get to, get to represent people as a member of the legislature, mm. a mem member of the Senate body. There's okay. 40 senators, there's 120 members of the Florida House, which I used to be a part of. I've done four years as a member of the House. Okay. I've done two years as a member of the Senate. I've served before as a legislative assistant to the former state representative, current mm. county commissioner, uh, Mayor Mac Bernard. Yep. And uh, I'm an AICP certified planner with a master's degree from Florida State University and you know, all the other stuff that goes with it. Former, one of the biggest problems is, you know, you know, right. uh, being a former competitive athlete, that's what part of my motivation for going hard every day. Mm -hmm. I was a member of the Florida a &M University track and field team. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you did undergrad at FAMU. FAMU, yeah. right. Yeah. You know, that's, I'm glad you said it. Because you skipped undergrad. Some people, you know, wouldn't have caught that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. That, you know what so, I'm saying? So I'm glad you brought it back. And then, uh, Part of the 2002 Mid Eastern Athletic Conference Championship Track and Field. Okay. Team. I got the ring to prove it. He had to plug that, so, you know, let y'all know he's fast. I used to be. Uh, <laughs> I do some fast talking now. Sometimes that's not even fast. Um, man, I'm glad to be here with man. you. It's an opportunity to thank you for, with thank you, you for an coming, opportunity man. for us to kind of dialogue Absolutely. and kind of let people know uh, some of the things we've been working on, some mm -hmm. of the motivation behind your. Mm -hmm. recent success and the motivation behind some of my success, mm -hmm. things I've gone through, things you've gone through, things that I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the political world mm -hmm. where because of, I don't know if it's Barack Obama who mm -hmm. did it as former president, President Barack Obama, leaving mm -hmm. his title. Right. Uh, because a lot of places I go, uh, all my colleagues get a title. They right. are senator this, representative right. that. But a lot of times people who call my colleagues by title call me Bobby. 
Right. And I had some well, but remember we had that conversation too. And I was like, he was like, man, you can call me Bobby. I said, hey man, listen man, like, this, this, hey man, you earned that. So I, I feel like for me to not call you what you earned is in a sense, you know? Uh, well. Uh, you work for that. You I work, work for, for that title. So at, why at not be? At the same time, right. But at the same time, I've had people, and I'm saying, if you know me on a personal level, right. if, like, if say you're at my house. And right, I ain't gonna call you Cindy the Bob at your house. It would feel weird. Like, <laughs> like if you're in my wedding and you're right. like, hey, uh, Senator Powell. Uh, right, I'm yeah. Here, you're facts, I understand Everybody that. Everybody else is. Congrats on the new baby, by the way. Thank you very much. How old is she? How old is she? She is four months. Okay, four okay. Welcome to fatherhood, my man. Welcome months. to fatherhood. It changes you. Absolutely. You have a little person that looks just like you. Especially being a girl. Being a girl. Yeah. She's already got her life planned out for her. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, her, her steps have been ordered. Yeah, okay. So, okay. But you know what? I, sometimes I want to ask the question to my daughter. Um, it's, it's Maya Angelou once said that, that her mother said to her that I believe you are amongst one of the greatest people to ever walk the face of the earth hmm. and how powerful that is. Yeah. When you see that every day and you know that you're looking at, you, you're looking at a child that could possibly be amongst the greatest people to ever walk the face of the earth, and you have the responsibility to make it so. to make it happen. Absolutely, that's a great responsibility. That's why I, I am the way I am with my son. That's why I'm Absolutely. the dad I am. But that's, that's why. And, and that's why we want to get into after a while yeah. your uh, your latest song, which is "Letters to My Son." Letter to my son. Absolutely, man. Um, that was just my way of telling my son, letting, giving my son he, something he can have for forever. Um, I can buy gifts and all this other stuff, take him here, the, we went to Universal Studios and going to trampoline, jumping and stuff, but what can I have, What I wanted to think of something that I can give him that he can always reference to, to say, man, my dad, this is how I know my dad loved me for real. He got a song, he made, he, wrote, he dedicated a whole song, a whole movement, a whole situation to me, to let me know how much he loved me, so, you know, and, and the great thing about it that people don't even really realize in that video, that don't even know, is that my real dad is in that video. My real dad was in and out of my life, but at the end of the day, you know what happens, man? God brings everything full circle. So he allowed the situation for my dad to be in town just that weekend that we wow. were shooting, by the way. It wow. just, he, it, that wasn't a planned thing. That thing, it just happened, you know what I mean? And it made the video just that much more powerful to see three generations of barbers in that, in that my brother was working. But to see three generations of barbers, my, my dad, and that was my dad's first time ever meeting his grandson, wow. by the way. Wow. So yeah, man, it was like a bunch of powerful stuff going on that didn't even really hit me until like later on. And then when I really saw the video, like man, I cried. Like it was like, oh man, like you know what I mean? I cried because to see what God put together, is, it was amazing, you know what I mean? Man, God will move mountains, I'll tell you that. And I mean. That's supernatural when you use uh, your natural, and you put it with the super, then mm -hmm. there you get. There the you go. There you go. Uh, Ramon, what I want to do is, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, history. So, so what we know is, what you and I both know is that I grew up in Riviera Beach. Right? Same street, Thirty yeah, Second Street. Oh, same street, Thirty Second Street, Old Avenue. That's how. What's that? But never realizing, of course, I'm a couple years older than you mm. are. Not a lot. Then you better stop dating yourself and telling people Not like you're somebody granddaddy around here. But, but I could, you know what? People my age are people's grandparents. That's what we going, we fighting against that. See, that's that right. means babies having babies, and we don't really need that. But right, right. that's a whole nother conversation. So let me let me put it to you. So I want to fast forward. Okay. Um, where I kind of recognize and realize, um, and kind of like you you blew on the map. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm a graduate of Palm Beach Gardens High School. And when Same you here. graduate from a high school and you, you leave, we were a part of um we were a part of the changing of times for Palm Beach Gardens. Absolutely. I, I came in when uh, we had switched from Coach Hill right. to Coach Battles to Coach Thark. It might have been a coach between that, I don't know, but yeah. we had Coach Thark. Man, my coach. Right? Yeah. So Coach Thark was the Thark was the coach that coached you at yeah. So Coach Coach Thark came in during my junior or senior year, I mm. think. And he came in and he came in with a whole different uh, perspective. Now, it's the same guys, the same athletes playing football. And that's why I know that when you start with a coach or you start mm -hmm. with a head, mm -hmm. it can change the whole outcome, Absolutely. the whole atmosphere. That was a no-nonsense dude with that. But <laughs> he was understanding. Absolutely. And he bought in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. 
he would tell you, gentlemen, I run this team. These coaches are my coaches. Mm -hmm. I run the team, so just know that I'm in control. Now, we had the same athletes on the team when I was there that we had under the other previous the previous coaches. Now, we were not winning games not with those coaches. You see the, so yeah. we changed heads with Coach Stark, and we started winning games. So I wanted to see starts at the head. what would happen when I left. Right. So I left and went to college at Florida a and and I would pay attention to what was going on um, back at Palm Beach Gardens because there would be newspaper articles, mm -hmm. there would be um, all kinds of stuff. Now, you and Earl Newby and of course. Shamari Earls mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, we, had, oh, we used to call them Chip, Jerry yeah, Brown. Chip, Jerry, yeah, Chip, Jerry. They were like all-stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, these were young guys that when I was there were, they were like kids, like ninth grade, 10th grade, yeah. whatever. We paid, Shamari was going to be good because he ran track with us, so yeah. I got to build a better bond with him. Gotcha. But you weren't there when I left. Right. So I was paying attention because your name was in the paper a lot too. Yeah. And I started watching from afar. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, this, this Ramon Barber, mm -hmm. this dude, it's going to be a star. Hey, right. thank you, man. Um, yeah, I, football was my thing, man. I played since I was seven years old, man, and um, that's honestly what saved my life, to be honest with you. Like, I believe I'm, I would have went down a completely different path had I not had sports, had I not had football, had I not had great coaches, great leadership, like you already previously pointed out. Like, if I didn't have that stuff, man, because, like, we, you know where we're where we from, like, m what most of our families end up falling into because of where we are and what's around us. And, it's just, it's just, we just don't think there's a way out a lot of times because you get so brainwashed with that inner city life and, mm -hmm. and, and, and without, fo without football, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to travel the country, meet different people, different places, go to Illinois State University, one of the most diverse universities in the world. You know what I mean? And I met people from all over, man, you know, and, and it was crazy because I met people that, that said they never, I met white people there that said they had never seen a black person in person. They only saw them on TV. Oh, wow. That blew my mind, man. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? You never saw a black person in person for real? It was like, no. We only saw, saw you on TV. So when people only see you on TV, the perception they have is there you go. much different from the reality. The reason I picked that number, by the way, because my birthday is January 13th. No. Um, that, that's always been, I always consider myself, um, I wanted to, my mom told me from a long time ago, this is a little sidebar, but a long time ago, my mom told me when I was little, like I used to get caught all the time. I always got in trouble. Like, I'll be with four friends and all of us take a piece of bubble gum, but I'm the one to get caught getting in trouble. And my mom would say, man, you, have, you got a covering on you. Like, you can't do what everybody else do. You, you are different. You, you're, gonna, you're gonna get caught, basically. Whatever, and whenever you do anything you're not supposed to do that's not in, God, that, not in line with God, you're gonna get caught. So 13 is an odd number, it stands out. It doesn't blend in. 13, lucky number 13, Friday the 13, you're, you're so on and so forth. So it kind of just stuck with me. Like I was born January 13th, man. So you know what? Like let's rock out with 13 all the way through my football, you know, my football shelf life. And um, that's when my that was my number. I looked till I got to the pros, and then you know it's a money thing. Then so, um, but that's a, just a little sidebar, man. Why 13 is a is a a nice a important number to me? Cause I, I feel like I'm different, and I know I was I know I'm different, and and I embrace it. I like that. Um, go back to meeting. Right. Going to Illinois and meeting um, people and you, you met a young lady who said right. she never... Yeah, man, this is so crazy. So I'm up there in Illinois, man. I'm from Florida, Riviera Beach, Florida, mind you. Never been out of the state of Florida other than to Detroit in the summertime, because that's where my dad's from. And I went up there a couple times to visit him in the summer. So I'd never seen snow or anything before. So now I get up to Illinois and I'm meeting all type of people. I'm meeting people from towns that got 200 people in it. And, graduated with 40 people, graduating class of 40 people, and you know, little, you know, for the lack of a better term, white people. And they from little small towns. And one girl in particular in the communications class I had, um, she said, wow, I never saw a black person in real life before. I'm like, huh? She's like, yeah, like, I hope I don't offend you. I said, of course not. She's like, yeah, but I didn't saw you on TV. And they only showed you guys being like really wild. I used to be nervous to meet you guys. I was like, wow. This we're still there in the 2000s. Wow, that was in that's in the 2000s. So, no? so of course, even today, I'm sure some young athletes are going away to different schools. Absolutely, in Illinois. Uh, my cousin went to Missouri Valley College. Mm -hmm. He told me something similar when he was in Missouri. Yeah, um, I, I stayed here in Florida, so I didn't mm -hmm. experience that. But you mean to tell me that this is things that these are things that people could be could be experiencing right now? Right now. To this day, and it's, and this is 2019. 
Like, it's wild when I think about it. It's like, man, people still ain't seen and experienced life with other races. This is why we are so divided. This is why certain things happen and certain ignorance and, and it just, uh, uh, just America's just so opinionated. And, and, and just because nobody wants to take the time to get to know anybody. Everybody just wants to see this and make a quick judgment. So, because the media does it for you. There you go. Part of the reason we do have videos and we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we, you, you have a way to change that perception. Absolutely. Now, as we talk about that, your football career, now, I know people who remember you when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people. You know, and yeah. So, uh, what you see in the shirt, you kind of muscled up, right? <laughs> I knew he was going to go. <laughs> Kind of muscles up. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be RTS. Yeah, oh man. What's RTS? Rip to shreds. Okay. But damn, I'm in a room with somebody who's a little bit more muscular. My, mm. I, I got to cover up. So here's the thing. So I heard that from the time you were seven, you were like, you were seven year old with muscles. And we we're like, what yeah. is going on? So you went on. How far did you take this football career? Um, football blessed me to make it all the way to the CFL level. Well, I made. Well, I got picked up NFL level um, by the Cowboys, but got that was a, a quick short stint. Um, Ricky Minicamp, um, I got cut, and then I went to, immediately right to Canada. Um, BC Lions, Vancouver, Vancouver, Canada. Beautiful place, by the way. Hold on, hold on. Let's go back to the Cowboys. So mm. before you got cut, mm. did they cut the check? Nah, nah, you, nah, we ain't, nah, we ain't get a chance, we ain't get that far. You had to make the team and get the check cut, but. Really? Yeah, and I got picked up free agent, so I got picked up free agent. I didn't get drafted or anything, unfortunately, because I thought I was, but, man, you know, I, I feel like I wasn't ready for anything. I, I wasn't ready then, like, I was still drinking. The party life was very important to me back then. Um, women, you know, the whole gambit, wanting to be this, the bright lights is what blinded me. You know, I like to say the bright lights and booties. You know what I mean? And um, and I, that's why now, like I have my little cousin now, he, he's in uh, he plays for the Eagles and nice. yeah, I'm Craig Von LeBlanc. And so yeah, when it, any Craig. any opportunity I get to talk to him, I just let him know, don't get blinded by that stuff. Stay focused. You got the opportunity to change the direction of your family. I always do that to to just keep him grounded. Even though he he's a very don't get he's a very humble guy. He's like. He's focused, it's just, if I can throw in my two cents, you know, I'll do that. Because I was there, and I get how fast you can get caught up in that life, and it'll be gone just like that. Well, that's a good part of history, because before you, was there anybody else in your family who you knew no. that had gotten there? Not even close. No, I was only, I was the, actually the only person in my family to ever earn a full, four, a full scholarship to a university, athletic-wise. Wow. Um, everybody else, my mom graduated from college, I have another cousin. Another few cousins that graduated from college, but they, they weren't on any scholarship or anything. So I was the first one in my family to have athletic talent take them to another level. Wow. So. I have a couple people in my family who made it to the NFL way when I was a young mm. But we didn't have close relationships, so I really didn't build upon that. I right. Wasn't, I wasn't interested, so that's amazing right. to, to see that. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you were talking about reminds me of one of my one of the rap lyrics that I've heard, and I want uh -oh. to jump into rap. Uh -oh. Not your rap lyrics no, here, but this uh, one. I can't so wait to hear it. So you said rock style, like rock style, lifestyle. Might, might not make, make it, okay. Right? <laughs> and that's what happens. So people start Absolutely. living this rock style lifestyle, and I've seen it a lot. I was in college yeah, uh, at Florida a and and I know uh, when I was at FAM, I made the track and field team. I got cut one year, mm -hmm. uh, and then I had to do, I had to come back and walk on, mm -hmm. which I had never been cut. I was devastated. Man, look at her, boy. I've never been cut. My first time ever getting cut was the Cowboys, and I was like, what? But at least it was, it was at the NFL level. But right? still, you, you st it's still the same thing. You don't ever get, you, when you've never been cut from nothing your whole life and it happens, you're like, what? I was devastated at the college level. I, I think it would have been the same for me regardless, man. Like, I, I don't care what level, because it had never happened. For me. I had never been cut from anything. I had never been on the bench. I had never. So reality set in. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big time. So yeah. reality set in. Now let's talk about this. So I've got in this journal, I've got mm -hmm. a couple of things I want to talk about regarding your music. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now you mind the motivated queen. Mom. Mom. Yeah, because yeah. most, because you, you actually one of the few people to pronounce my name correctly, Ramon. And a lot of other people say Ramon. So to me, it's like, man, just don't call me Raymond, you know? So I'm cool with that. Just Raymond, you know, Raymond just totally far left, you know? Ramon, Ramon, tomato, tomato, you know? Okay, so tell me the difference between Moan, mm -hmm. the motivated king, mm -hmm. 
and Puff. Moan Puff. is the grown version, the, the more grown up, more seasoned, more more lesson learned, value, appreciate the little things about life and everything. He that's who he is. Puck was more the bright lights and booty chaser. Um, okay. for the like just to be blunt. Puck was about Puck wanted to just get his story out and blow up from his story and 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 have fun, um, go pop the bottles and drink and be that guy. Not saying that Mon don't like to have a good time and Mon don't like to I don't drink anymore. I don't drink alcohol anymore, anything of that sort. Um, but I still like to have a good time and work the responsible way now, the, the way where I can get up and go go do handle business the next day, get up and go to work if I got you know do what I got to do the next okay. day. Um, it's, it, I feel like it's just a way to do everything nowadays, man. Um, it's it's a way to be to go about your business as an adult, as a as a grown businessman, a father. You know, um, you just got a lot of things that you that that you got to do the right way in order for everything to line up. Okay, so I have. Even back when you were working in the Salvation Army, yeah, and where you made a lot of connections, mm -hmm. so I knew you as Pop Barber. Mm -hmm. um, I looked up some of your music back then, mm -hmm. and you were you, you shot some videos, mm -hmm. um, and it was still. Let's talk about the names. So one of them was Go Get It, right? Mm -hmm. Then there was Patience. Mm -hmm. uh, there was something small, a small mm -hmm. video called The Come Up. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit about, so I like the video, Do It Work, right? Right, Do It Work. But right. it's so hard, like, so if I were, let's just say I was a boxer, because that's how you box, mm -hmm. or whatever, and I want to use that as a theme, like, mm -hmm. the, the hardest part is, like, I want to use it, because it's got a nice beat, mm -hmm. but, you know, being, um, being somebody politically correct, mm -hmm. being somebody, mm -hmm. the first part is like, it's, B word, go do it. Mm. I, B, I do it. So, mm. Mm. how did you go from that, mm. right, to um, letters to my son? Well, I mean, well, in a sense, man, I, I create music on feelings. Um, so, at the end of the day, I don't really censor my music as opposed, like, I don't do it on purpose. Um, mm -hmm. For the, you know, I just, I, whatever comes, I feel like Milter, 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 music is. An expression. The music gives you the opportunity to be who you want to be in that within that song, within that realm. And a lot of times, man, I just felt, you know, when you feel aggressive, that's what that's what come out. You know, when you let people know what you're doing and how you move, and that's what come out. Um, let it to my son was more of a gentle. It's, it's, it's to my son. You know, my son is five, four, five now. So let me say four in front of him. He'll be like, I'm five, daddy. So he tell me five now. You know. Correct me, make sure, make sure I know. You know what I'm saying? Thing. So the other video, um, I saw the video Patience, right? Okay. And in the video Patience, you 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 got a whole different little look. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You ain't got no beard. Nope. You're not a part of the beard game. Not yet. Right. I was then, still in denial. I was shaving it every chance I got. Uh, yeah. And then in the video Patience, uh, you look at you, you look at you now, mm. right? You're chiseled. Mm. You I was, six pack had a little pot you know, belly back then <laughs> working out no, but you were very confident with your little pot yeah, belly yeah, right yeah yeah because and then you like your pants were sagging a little bit yeah. what what made you change from being like listen um your face was a little chubbier yeah like um what made you tell me about your health and what what you do differently for your body because you were younger back then. absolutely so being that you were younger i would think that it's easier to be in shape when you're younger because now as i Every day, I'm not as young as I used to be, but mm -hmm. I'm younger than I'll ever be again. There you so go. So I say that to say that yesterday I ran a little bit and I had to really motivate myself yeah, yeah, to yeah. go out of the house. Absolutely. So um, how do you do it? How do you maintain? How do you focus on, you know, mm -hmm. people who are over 30 mm -hmm. who want to have a six pack? Mm -hmm. How do we do it? Um, basically, man, find find what's in you that pushes you to want to be who you, who, the person you want to see. Like basically, I know what I how I want to look at myself and want to look at my body and what I want to see, and and I go go do what I got to do to get those results within the realm of doing it the natural, healthy way. Um, like you said, man, um, uh, the patience, man. I was at a way different time in life, man. I was battling, you know, I was in a relationship, a draining relationship, man. I was drinking a lot, 
wasn't sleeping a lot, eating whatever, not going to the gym, had no motivation to go to the gym at all. I just wanted to wake up and drink and do mu make music and party. And um, I had just had my son at the time going through going through things with my son's mom, with my son's mom. And it was just crazy. Matter of fact, like one of the craziest events in my whole life happened after that video shoot. By the way, that's another reason why I never forget that because, man, it was it was just a crazy thing. Situation popped out between my son, and mother, and I. That's kind of that was the end, the beginning of the end of us. But um, but it didn't. That was going through a lot, man. And um, so with, I, I'm. I look at that video often to see my, what I was looking like and to remember the mind frame that I was in to never go back there again. And um, and um, so basically, man, I, I basically changed my diet. I quit drinking alcohol. Um, it's been two plus years since I even had a sip of alcohol, beer, and I was battling alcoholism. I'll be, op I'm open about that. Um, I, that's that was my coping mechanism. That was the way I dealt with letdown, pain, hurt, discomfort, any of that. Anytime I lost anything, I'm going to get a bottle, I'm going to drink. And it wasn't drink just to feel better, it was drink to get messed up, you know what I mean? So I had to deal with that. That's something that my, that my family deals with, alcoholism running through our family and stuff like that. And I just, I turned to God, man, and I told him I ain't want either he take control or I don't want my life no more, pretty much. I got to that point of suicidal thoughts and suicidal, pretty much almost putting it into motion, you know? And um. It was a scary thing, man, and I just realized, like, what saved my life, honestly, is, is God, my son, and myself, you know, like, knowing that I couldn't, I love my, I had to love, I love myself too much, and I didn't want to leave this earth with people telling my son, your daddy killed himself, he was great, and, but he, something happened and he killed himself, like, no, nah, I don't want I didn't want to do that, so, um, definitely what motivates me now is just being the best version of myself for my son every day, for myself first. Then, my, then you know, for God and my son and everything else, everybody else gonna gonna love whatever I bring to put to the table because whatever I bring to the table. Because if I know I'm happy with myself, everybody else gonna be happy with me, and I, that's just what it is for me. If I set a good example for my son to, to follow, I'm happy. You know, as long as I follow God's orders for my life, I'm happy. I don't really need much else because everything else falls into play anyway. Um, where I'm at with my music at this point is uh, I want to tell my story in a motivating way, in a way that doesn't glorify, you know, the things that come with success, meaning the, the women, the, the materialistic things of that nature. We all know that comes with success, we understand that, but now it's, Moan is handling it the mature way. Moan Movedi King is handling it like people are watching him, like people are following his footsteps. Correct. And not, it's not all about him. Correct. So that's what, that's what Moan Movedi King represents. Puff, it was all about Puff. Moan Motivated King represents like, okay, this is the lane I'm in, this is the path I'm um, trailblazing for my son to follow, this is where, where we going with it, and people are watching, everybody's watching, I have peers watching, I have people under me watching, my mother, everybody, so I'm conscious of it now, and um, I, make, I make conscious music, do I talk about past experience, of course, do I use curse words and things of the nature, yes, but is it done in a malicious way? Is it done to, no, absolutely not. It's me telling the story, it's me in the moment, feeling what I need to feel. Because once you get in there, you don't really want to think in the, in the booth. You want to just feel. Mm. You want to take, you want it's a feeling. You want to take the right, you want people to take the ride with you, as opposed to you just barking things at them. You want them to understand where you were in that moment, during that song, whatever you may be talking about. And um, there was, that's what I, I I'm so happy that we get to do what we do now with our, our series that we do, man. Um, we got to get back to it, but um, we will. But um, This is a year of, um, this is a year, like you say, I do it, go get it. Mm -hmm. And even back then, you went, go get it, sure. Mm -hmm. It's a year of, um, it's not a year of procrastination. It's getting nah. things done. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we're back on it, and we can tell people how to contact us, mm -hmm. how to get us to come out to their school, mm -hmm. to their to their adult group absolutely. to um, dare to be different, dare, dare to dominate, dominate absolutely. which you and I have done a few different events where we've spoken to groups together and challenged them to dare to be different, to dare to dominate, and absolutely. then given out um, the secrets that you and I both have mm -hmm. used for success. Uh, for me, what I can tell people is that my path is a little bit different. I'm mm -hmm. motivated by something different. I've never been a drinker. Right. But I've had people in my life who've drunk enough for me. Mm -hmm. So when I go somewhere and they're like, and, you know, I'm in the legislature, and they say, well, you don't drink. And I'm like, well, you know, I had people who, who drunk enough for me. I've seen 
people. Um, I, I don't understand. It's like going and getting on a ride mm -hmm. at the fair for me. I don't ride rides. Me neither. Not at the fair. I, I don't ride rides that there's no reason for me to get on anything that makes me feel like I'm about to die. I got you. Get off and say, that was fun. Got you. That's just not me. So with drinking, I've seen people pass out, knock themselves in the head. Mm -hmm. I've seen people sleep with people. Nothing good comes of it. Right. Basically. They want to wake up with somebody who they didn't want to wake up with, right? <laughs> I've seen people uh, just make poor choices after drinking, mm -hmm. getting fights. Right. Uh, if, trust me, if I fight somebody, I knew I fought them. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. not, I, I don't, listen, at this point in my life, I'm not trying to fight anybody. No, nah, we ain't doing and that. And I'm at a whole nother level, but right. it's a level up here. Absolutely. Right? And I got a song called Level Dog. That's funny you said that. I can't wait for you to hear it, by the way. It's good. Did Sierra help you with it? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> no, but, uh, back on that same thing. Yeah. This year, as always, I've set goals. I've got 10 books that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. Same I've here. already knocked out three. Right. See, we. that's another thing people don't know. Like, he, we ch he challenged me to read a certain amount of books. Um, same here, and that's what we do. We, we haven't been keeping up with each other with it. But I, I, can, I have been reading like crazy. You've been accountability reading. part. Accountability part, integrity part, you know what I'm integrity. saying? When, doing what you know you're supposed to do even when nobody looking, nobody checking on you. Man, you, you, just, hit, you just said something that's very, very important to me, um, and that's integrity. Mm -hmm. As we move, and one of the things that I tell anybody is integrity is such a strong word. Mm -hmm. And when somebody says that, their integrity is on the line. For me, I've had people in my life who have said, you know, um, I have integrity, mm -hmm. or, or they tell me they have integrity. Mm -hmm. Generally, integrity is something shown. Like Absolutely. Say, like a feeling is shown. If somebody tells you that I'm a man of integrity, and they have to tell you, you just gotta you watch probably them. Gotta understand. a lot of times, and when I think, one of the things I've seen, and it's been over the last few years, uh, where I've dealt with people, um, and this is why, you know, I'd rather have, somebody said it, I heard the other day, I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies mm -hmm. when it comes to friendships. Mm -hmm. um, Facts. Because you want quality, quality friends. Quality now, over quantity. A hundred pennies is the same thing as a dollar, mm -hmm. but four quarters, that's the same amount, but it's less. Right? With, a, with a bunch of, with a hundred pennies, it can make a lot bigger mess than four quarters. Mess, right. right. Uh, less Cut out the riffraff. Yeah, the less people I hang with, the less problems I have, things mm -hmm. like that. So. One of the things I found, especially in this position, right, mm -hmm. there are very, very few people that you bring close to you. There are very, very few people that you trust because when people will look at you directly in your face, mm -hmm. right, and they'll lie to you, uh, especially for me, it's very damaging because you're already in a position where you can't be vulnerable, but you need right. to be vulnerable. Everybody has to learn how to be a little bit vulnerable right. in order to live, as, especially as men uh as black men we deal with in our society we deal with mental illness we Absolutely. deal with mental health we deal with depression and it's we frowned deal upon with all these things that we don't want to talk about and mm -hmm. it's frowned upon mm -hmm. Fr frowned upon yeah and we have no release people mm -hmm. at least try not to release Absolutely. so for me every once in a while i you know i have to let myself be vulnerable right? yeah because i have to be sane and what we teach in dare to be different dare to dominate is how to get past feelings of that you have to let go of. Right. You have to have some type of emotion. Mm -hmm. You have to let people know, hey, I'm having a hard time coping. Absolutely. When people die, we have to have a release. You yeah. cannot be stone cold when your brother or your closest cousin or your mother passes away. You have to have a release. And you can't be afraid that people will see you differently because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're still the same person. Absolutely. But you are a person who has at some point been vulnerable because you've lost somebody. Absolutely. You have to show emotion. You have to let it out. Mm -hmm. And we spend so much time not letting it out that our we, first, first of all, suffer internally Absolutely. with depression. Absolutely. Um, we take it out on others, whether it be our wife or our children. And when we do that, it becomes about us and we lose people in the process. You said it. So as we push forward, this year is a year of continued success and growth. Mm -hmm. And that's what it'll be about. We will dare to be different. We'll dare to be, dare to dominate. Absolutely. Um, people can find me at Senator Powell mm -hmm. on Instagram, mm -hmm. P-O-W, not the whole word. And then they can find you at Mo, I mean, no, that's, no, no, it's Motivated King, two eyes in the king, no, two eyes, 
like I said, man, there to be different, there to dominate. Everything I do is for a reason. I put two eyes in King for a reason on, on my social media handles because I want you to understand, like, I want to stand out. It's, everybody called himself a king, but I got two eyes in mind because I really live like that. I really, really challenge myself to be the best version of me every day and all the way down to my compadres, to my business partners, my cameraman. Every single day we talking and we getting, we working on getting each other better. When I say call myself a king, that don't mean I rule you or I rule any, anybody around me. No. We all are kings. We all are created in God's image. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, but he put us here to motivate each other, to build with each other, to create strong bonds, to create strong nations for his glory. So I get that. So at the end of the day, I'm just the one who put it all on my shoulders and on my back. Say, I'm the motivated one to motivate you and anybody else who need it. You know what I mean? I definitely and, appreciate that. And I challenge myself, man. I like to do what people don't want to do, man. You know? I, I, I definitely appreciate that. And I like that because um, for me, when you see other people pushing you and motivating you, it makes you go harder, mm -hmm. makes you go stronger, makes you go faster, it makes you grow. Uh, my handle is always a uh, life of service is a life that counts. And I say that because mm -hmm. if I we were not supposed to relate, if we we're not supposed to have other people who we help, other people we uplift. Other what people are people. we doing? We're, what are we doing? Right. And God wouldn't have made us be able to communicate and talk with each other. We would have been like many of the other animals that don't have languages, who are not able mm -hmm. to speak, who are not able to feel. So if I see my brother is down, then I'm trying to lift you up. I'm Absolutely. trying to pick you up. I've learned over the years that your presence, meaning you, meaning you being there, you physically being there, is much more than your presence, meaning that if I say, Ramon, I need you to be somewhere for me. Uh, it's very, very important that you're there for me. Um, and I need you to be there on time. Mm -hmm. And you don't show up, but you send a gift. Um, yes. That gift means nothing right. more than you physically saying, I was there. Now, we mm -hmm. know that things happen. Hey, my mom had an illness. I had to right. take, but at least being up front and say, hey, I really want to be there for you. I can't be there. Right. And I've learned over the years that people will, when you need people the most, not show up for you. So I want to thank you for what you do. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. It's it's another year. It's time to dare to be different. Time to dare to dominate. And uh, we're ready to go. I appreciate you, my man. And man, this is just the beginning, man. We're gonna have plenty more opportunities. Like you said, follow me, Mona Motivated King. No, I'm sorry, Motivated King on Instagram. Follow him, Senator Powell, P O W is is the uh it's his handle um senator pow and you're gonna be hearing a lot more from us seeing a lot more from us and um that's it we out of here thank all you all right man. let's do it appreciate it my brother thank you bro all right, thank you